So a couple of months ago when I built my new Travel 4K PC, I didn't think it would get any better. I thought, hey, this is the smallest, most compact, most powerful desktop PC I can get that can edit 4K videos on the road. But then ASRock sent in this thing beside me here, their Desk Mini, and this packs a GTX 1066 GB edition, and it has the ability to install a 6th or 7th gen 4 core 8 threaded CPU, and you couple that in with the ability to have 32GB of DDR4 so dim memory, and you've got yourself this little powerful beast here. Now it is actually smaller in dimensions than my in-win chop, and so it comes in with a total capacity size of 2.7 liters, and it's 212 mil tall, by 154 millimeters long, by 81 millimeters deep. So it is a little bit shorter in length and width, but it is a little bit thicker than the Inwin Choppin. However, that said, it does carry an AC adapter, and this is probably my only critique with this product. You do need the AC adapter to give this unit power, it does plug in the back via a four pin connector, but with that, this whole build only uses up about 140 watts, with an i7-6700 and a GTX 1066 gigabyte, which interestingly enough can be overclocked on both the memory and the core clock, but you can't change the fan speeds for some reason and you can't unlock voltage. So this is an MXM type graphics card configuration. I've never actually heard of it until now, and apparently they are releasing a GTX 1070 and 1080 model in the same form factor. Though for me personally, the 1060 is great for this size. Doesn't use a whole lot of power. I'd imagine if you put something in like a GTX 1080, for example, you would have some thermal problems, especially if the cooler is as small as it is on this one here, the GTX 1060. But for what it's worth with the temperatures, we're talking around 70 degrees maximum, even when overclocked in a heaven benchmark, after around 20 minutes of stressing. Also in games, the CPU, that got up to about 70 degrees, though when I stress tested it individually, it did go all the way up to 90 degrees. But with that, it was the quietest I've ever heard of four core eight threaded CPU on the Intel stock heatsink fan. I'll give you guys a quick listen. So what this means is ASRock have set in a very subtle fan profile from the get-go. And now when I initially got this unit, it does come in with three NVMe M.2 slots. And so I use an NVMe M.2 drive and I had no problems until I got to Windows, it crashed and then I updated the BIOS and it was working perfectly after that. In the BIOS itself, I didn't have any uh, configuration to overclock the memory. Though one thing I could do was actually down the timings. So I could make it tighter for gaming. And when I did this, even with the so dim memory, it did make a difference in games. Games were running very smoothly on this configuration. When we move over to the firstly PUBG, I was getting around 75 FPS on high settings at 1080p on both different maps, the new map and the original map. And the 0.1% lows were very impressive too, so the recent update may have optimized this game even further. Moving over to GTA 5, if you like a bit of this, at 1080p, seems to be very popular again, must have been the Steam sale, but I was getting around 80 FPS on the highest settings on this game at 1080p. Then moving over to Crisis 3, of course, there's always that question, can it run Crisis? And yes, it can, 60 FPS, 1080p max settings. And then we move over to lastly to Doom. We're getting around 122 FPS on ultra settings. So this thing was absolutely kicking it at 1080p gaming. And that's the advantage of this sized unit. It's very small, you can travel with it, but of course it has a lot more graphical power than my in-win travel PC, for example. So not only could I edit videos on this, but also with that, I can play games on the road, especially if I'm hooking up to a 1080p TV, which a lot of hotels do seem to have. But taking a quick look in the details of this unit, you get a hard type front panel with a USB Type-C and a USB 3.1 connection. Also get your headphone and audio in jacks, and you've got on the side two two USB 2 slots, and on the rear, an additional two USB 3 ports. It was one thing I had to critique about the USB ports, it would be that I'd like to see two more additional USB ports on the rear of the unit, as I believe five USB ports standard type connections is pushing it a little bit, especially if you're traveling, you're probably gonna hook up an audio interface, an extra webcam and whatnot if you're streaming on the road, and you're gonna need those USB ports available. Though besides that, the whole frame itself is practically all meshed except for the front panel. So this allows this unit to breathe very easily. Even the rear IO shield has mesh in it. So it's a great design from ASRock, and especially with that low noise, as you guys heard before, with the fan profiles being quite silent and the temps being pretty good, this is a unit 
that is definitely going to please people. But of course, this unit being a GTX 1060, you do get that HDMI 2.0 rear out, display port, and mini display port outs for graphic options. There's also dual band wireless included in the unit, and it comes with two antennas to boot. And as for the construction of this unit, it's an all aluminium chassis. You can take it apart very easy, and all you have to do is install two sodium RAM sticks, or one if you want, a CPU, the cooler, and of course your NVMe drives, and you're now good to go. Though this unit itself, it does come in at $800 US, and I can only find it available for sale currently at newegg.com. I will report on availability in the description below as time goes on. But with that at $800, it is a bit more expensive than what you could get these parts for individually. But what you're paying for here is simply the size. It is incredibly small, and I do imagine this unit definitely pleasing people like myself who are going traveling, need that desktop-like performance on the road, especially 32 gigabytes of RAM, extra storage options for NVMe, and they're editing videos, but they also want to play games with the power of a GTX 1060. But anyway guys, that's about it for me today. This was a loan sample provided by ASRock, so I do unfortunately have to return it though. As for getting one for myself, I may think about purchasing one. It is just so damn cool for the size. Again, the only thing I would really critique is I'd like to see that AC adapter somehow implemented into the unit so you've just got one simple unit to carry around and travel, even if it makes it a little bit bigger. I'd love to see them implement that. Of course, a couple more USB slots, but besides that, really good unit, one that I can highly recommend. Very low noise, and keep in mind, these temperatures are in the dead heat of summer as well, so the fact that it performed as well as it did is a testament to how well ASRock are designing their products as of late. So with this unit, you do get that case, you do get the power supply, the AC adapter, the B250 chipset, and the GTX 1060 MXM. And of course, the BIOS was extremely easy to use, and updating it, you just can plug in an internet cable and it'll update itself for you within the bar. So that was really cool to see. And with that guys, let me know in the comments section below what you think of this little unit. Do you see yourself getting one if you're building a travel PC or would you rather a laptop? Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And don't forget to hit that like button and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.